AI sovereignty, it's the new catchphrase in the world of tech. But what does it mean? It means your artificial intelligence must be yours alone. The data, the process, the algorithms, all of it must be owned and regulated at home. You can't just use foreign ones. Most tech titans are talking about this. The latest one is the CEO of NVIDIA. This is what he said. Own your own national intelligence. You can, cannot allow that to be done by other people. And that is a real the realization. Now that we've democratized the computation of AI, the infrastructure of AI, the rest of it is really up to you to take initiative, activate your, uh, your uh, industry, uh, build the infrastructure as fast as you can so that the researchers, the companies, your governments can take advantage of this infrastructure to go and create your own AI. So that's the message. Create your own artificial intelligence. But how and why? Most experts agree that AI will get bigger in the coming years. It will make your lives easier. It will also make the government's job easier. But for that, you need local AI. Take India, for example. People speak dozens of languages in India. Their requirements, their aspirations are different. Will a foreign AI be able to capture all of it? Chances are no. Same with data. AI systems require a lot of data about the people. Why should foreign firms get access to that? We let that happen with social media. Western tech firms pioneered social media. India never tried to challenge them. And look at where it got us. Some of them refused to comply with Indian laws. Most of them store their data outside India. And they refused to take responsibility for their actions. But now it's too late. Social media sovereignty is an impossible dream now. Maybe AI sovereignty is not. It's still early days, which brings us to the most important question. How do you make sovereign AI? The first step is digital sovereignty, storing user data inside India, not outside. Our data should be stored inside the country. The government is thinking in that direction. Last year, the IT ministry released a draft, the Data Governance Framework. That's what it was called. It talked about an Indian data set platform. Think of it as a compilation of random non-personal data. The plan is to make this data available to Indian startups and researchers. What for? So that homegrown AI platforms can be made. In other words, AI sovereignty can be achieved. In fact, let me quote from what the IT minister said. We can take two options. One is to say, as long as there is an AI ecosystem in India, whether that is driven by Google, Meta, Indian startups and Indian companies, we should be happy about it. But we certainly don't think that is enough. We are determined that we must have our own sovereign AI. That's what the minister said. And it won't be easy, though. Western AI firms have a head start. It will take a lot of time and money to catch up. Plus, the world is betting against it. Let me tell you what happened last year. Open AI CEO Sam Altman was in India, and he was asked whether Indian AI models could rival chat GPT. Do you know what he said? He said it was impossible. India will have to work hard to change that, to prove the likes of Sam Altman wrong. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.